I told, I called Cormier and I told him I got a, I got some good news and some bad news for you. Good news is I got you a fight. Oh, you know this kid Cummins? And he goes, yeah. He said, he, 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 he's going to take the fight? And I said, yeah. He said, the bad news is, he said he made you cry in training. He said, he said that? And I said, yeah. And he, he went off about that. I, I think, uh, I think he's embarrassed and I think he's upset. So we'll see what happens on Saturday. I mean, is it contrived? I, I don't know. That's the only he knows that. Did you step over the line with some of the stuff that he said? I mean, apparently, it, apparently in the wrestling world, what he did, he broke like, he broke like the man code. He broke the, you know, he broke the, 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 the law of wrestling. And, and all the guys who are wrestlers have said that to me. Like, it's, you don't do it. And there's obviously that issue that, that Daniel spoke about that his daughter had passed away the year before. And, and that he what? That, that Daniel's daughter had passed away the year before, and that was a lot of the emotion behind him crying and things like that as well. Right. I mean... Well, I think, and, and that's what I think it is. I think it's, I think he's embarrassed by what he said, and I think he's uh, upset that, that he did that. And, like I said, no, nobody wants... Somebody walking around saying they made him cry. Like so, no, ta no tell, you don't tell like, what's going on. Yeah, plus, plus, you know, he had guys rotating in on him. He, his, 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 his daughter had passed away. You know, he, he was going through a lot of stuff mentally and emotionally. But uh, yeah, I think I think uh, I think he, I think I think he's pissed. You know, uh, I, I didn't see that coming, or I would ne never let him get that close to each other. It doesn't look like you saw it coming here. What are your reaction? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> a little late to it. Is, yeah. there anything, is there anything you can do if two guys want to shove each other out of, out of way? No, I will know. Yeah, if I see it coming, I can. A lot of times, like, when, when there's something heated, it usually starts in the back. Okay. Before they come out for the weigh -ins. Yeah, before they come out for the weigh-ins. That won't happen tomorrow, I can promise you that. But normally it starts in the back and we hear about it, and they warn me before they come out to, 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 to square off for the weigh-ins. Or if even one thing has been said back and forth, between them in interviews or, or on Twitter or things like that, I'm usually ready. I wasn't ready for that one. Does that one bother you? Or you think it was just? More I hate. Like no, I don't like it. I don't like when they touch each other before the fight. It's, anything could happen. That kid could have fucking. This look at the stage. That kid could have fucking fell right there. And, have you ever lost a fight because somebody got hurt in the like that? No, no. The, the closest, the closest, the one that scared me the most was uh, Diego Sanchez and Josh Koscheck. I don't know if you remember that, but he hit him so hard that. That he almost fell off the scale, over the scale, and you know, I do the best I can to make sure that doesn't happen. Sneakiest one ever was Anderson Silva. I didn't even know that that was possible to hit somebody like that. Remember when he hit Kale <coughs> Son? Yeah, it freaks me out. I don't like it, and I try to stop it. Regardless of what happens on Saturday, is Cummins put himself in a position to, to stick around with you guys? Cummins, Cummins put himself in. You know, he, he took an opportunity. An opportunity was created. However, this whole thing organically happened. It, I, I, I'd never heard of Patrick Cummins until the morning I was driving to work, you know, when I made that fight. I, I'd never even heard of the guy. I, 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 I read up on him. I, I had some people pull some stuff. I talked to our guys, and, and I said, this kid wants this fight, and he's got a story, and we'll give him an opportunity. And Daniel wanted the fight. He wanted to fight. So from from a promotion standpoint, he seems like he really took to it very quickly and yeah. very natural. Listen, you, you guys know it's like when Kev just said to me, Kev said, that was Ghost to try. Did he do this? Did he do that? I don't tell anybody to do anything. I didn't tell I, we told Cummins story. These two have their thing. They're gonna show up, they're gonna fight. We don't tell anybody to do this, to do that. Are you kidding me? With, with the stuff we got going on, you don't think a fight will come out and say, Dana used to tell us to say this and Danny used to tell us to say that and he used to I don't tell anybody to do anything a fight is what it is it, it plays out however it plays out look at look at the the Rousey Tate leading up to Rousey Tate I mean hate they hated each other you know what I mean these two completely respect each other and you know it is what it is You're not every no two fight is the but same isn't Ronda playing it smart with Sarah McMahon and kind of not giving her anything to hang on to in terms of venom or don't, don't you remember her and Liz Carmouche? Yeah, she was pretty smart with her. She loved Liz Carmouche yeah, yeah, and yeah. She, she spoke very highly of her and was honored mm -hmm. to fight her and, you know, so Ronda, no beef Ronda's, Ronda's, you know, she's not some lunatic. She, she's, she's, she didn't like and doesn't like Misha Tate. They're never going to like each other. And that's the way they're always going to be toward each other. Does she never cease to amaze you, Ronda? No, she doesn't. She's, she's you know, <laughs> I was... I was reading this thing today where she was saying she's nervous about pay-per-view buys. <laughs> you know, fucking kidding me? It's, it's unbelievable. About the number of pay-per-views. Yeah. yeah, 
Who give, what other fighter gives a shit how many pay-per-view buys we do on Saturday? Give a shit what we do. I know what I'm getting paid, you know? Mm. She's worried about the pay-per-view buys. She said, let me worry about the pay-per-view buys. Relax, lady. She's the biggest star now, so maybe she's all that pressure. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. Good. I, I, I'm glad that she feels like, uh, you know, she has to work harder and do more. And, and, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's one of the many things that, that I love about Ronda. Ronda is, I'm telling you, the hardest worker I've ever seen, especially in this sport. The hardest worker I've ever seen and uh, she just she does everything the right way, man. She, she uh, keeps us in the loop on everything she's doing. You hear what she has said at the press conference? She's like, uh, Juggling the yeah, well, no, she said I haven't focused, I did a 45 minute conference call about a movie. That's it for this camp. And that, that's all I've been doing is, is working on this fight. And then once she leaves, she'll dive into that and, and focus on that. She, she's a pretty unique individual. What do you see anything around her in Let me tell you what, there's a lot of people that if they were in her position this last year would have crashed and burned, you know? She has handled it like a pro. She's c conducted herself like a professional, like a champion. I mean, I, I seriously, I can't say enough good things about her. She's a it's not, but what's she juggling? She, she's got, she's going two fights back to back, and then she's obviously going to have some time off anyway. What do you do when you get time off? Some people gain a bunch of weight, and then they wait for the next fight, and then they have to go into camp again. She's going to stay busy. She's going to stay in great shape because she can't put on a bunch of weight for, for a movie. You know what I mean? So she's going to. She's going to do her thing, and everybody keeps talking about, well, what happens if she leaves and goes to Hollywood? What happens if she leaves and goes to Hollywood? How's that bad for us? How's it bad for the sport? Is, is The Rock being a huge superstar bad for the WWE? But no. isn't it bad for Ronda's MMA because, you know, there's nobody else that has that kind of attraction. But we always, But we always say that. We always say that when some... The, I've been answering these questions. What are you guys going to do when Chuck Liddell retires? You guys are in big trouble when that guy goes away. And the list goes on and on. This is a sport with a limited window of opportunity. We all know this. It's like, like now with these guys that are retiring and stuff, you know, these guys are retiring and it's like, you know, wh what, what am I gonna do? What's the next chapter of my life? Where do I go? Did anybody sign with the UFC to think that this was gonna be a lifetime job, that they'd be here till they, you know, till they retired when they were 72 years old? No, it's this big. You get in, you, 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 you make a huge impact, you accomplish as many good things as you can accomplish and then you move on to the next stage of your life. How many what? She'll fight three times this year. Yeah. Yeah. What you just made about Ronda, you were talking about the fact that she's personality changed to perception of women. We also said at the time you were worried about the death of the gender in the sport. Your thoughts on how that's evolved? Because obviously you're feeling pretty confident now about the depth of the women's division in the UFC. Thanks to pioneers like her and Gina Carano and, and many other women ahead of them that didn't get to come and do the stuff that these girls are doing, um, it's come it's come a long way fast. And there, there's nothing but depth and it's only going to get bigger now because there's money involved here, you know? Like, like we were saying in the beginning, other uh, Olympians and, and other women that, that love to compete and, and little girls right now are in MMA gyms all over the world uh, training in MMA. It's, it, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. At one point, I wasn't sure. It wasn't that, that I wasn't I was, I was worried about the level of competition. But you, everybody here and everybody who's ever watched, I mean, that Rousey Tate fight was awesome. That was an exciting fight that night. The place was going crazy. Um, and I think this one will be too. I, 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 I'm very... Uh, I'm very interested to see how this goes. You think about Ronda's won every single fight by armbar, right? But when Ronda goes down to the ground, if the, we'll end there. It's good. They're going to end up on the ground one way or the other. The question becomes, what happens if Ronda puts her on her back? Wrestlers don't do too well on the backs. We'll see how Sarah does. And Ronda's going to, for the first time, be fighting someone who, when Ronda's on her back trying to pull off armbars, is going to be dropping elbows and punches. I'm, when we were sitting up here at the press conference, I was looking at her. You see the size of her arms? Oh my God, her arms are huge, man. Her forearms are huge, her hands are big. You know, she's a big, strong girl. Rogan said that when he was interviewing her, he put his arm around her, said it's seriously like grabbing a piece of brick. Like she is a powerful, you know, woman. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this she's plays out. She's got an aura of deep, deep self-belief, isn't she? About yeah. Her. 
and she's just a real quiet storm. Just yeah. you know, mm. she, she's she's not a she's not big on, on on talking publicly in the media and stuff. She's very quiet. It's 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 a, t uh, stylistically, it's a very interesting fight. And you talk. Do you find it sorry, interesting Kevin. that between grappling, like before there was like a Hoist Gracie, and then the evolution came with the wrestler like Matt Hughes. Do you see that happening with the women's division? What? Uh, just the evolution and how like the different styles. Are it's there. Different. It's there now. I mean, Ronda Rousey is 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 becoming more and more well-rounded. You know, Misha Tate's a good well-rounded fighter. We're, uh, you know, um, we're gonna see how many, how well-rounded McMahon is on Saturday. What are we gonna say? I was gonna ask you when you talk, is it having a uh, high level of athleticism more important, or is it evenly matching the fighters in the fight that's the most important thing? Yeah, um, athleticism is very important. I mean, if you look at a guy like John Jones, he's a great athlete. You know what I mean? Um, but being well-rounded is, is is very important in the sport. Uh, Ronda's stand-up. If you look at Ronda's stand-up last time, stand-up look. I mean, she hurt. Uh, she hurt uh, Tate a couple times. You look at the first Ronda Rousey Tate fight and the second one; they're night and day. So it's going to be interesting to see. I told you guys. She sends me everything that she does. She sends me all the film on her sparring. You should see her sparring sessions. All straight stand up. No, no takedowns or gross. I don't, but I'm sure you could ask her. The girl, the girl that she sparred with, they had to bring. She was knocking out sparring partners in, in camp, and they had to bring in um, a girl from Mexico. She's ranked number three in the world, and her and Ronda are just going at it. Yeah, Luc no, Lucia Riker um, was bringing girls in for her last camp. And did Lucia make any comments? Yeah, did she did. Well, it was, on, it was on the show. It was on uh, uh, primetime. Yeah. yeah. As Ronda got to the point, like, GSP or Anderson Silva, Sarah McMahon happened with her, would there, would there, would there be likely a, a rematch? Or Again, I, I don't, I don't ever think about we got to see how the fight goes. I don't ever think about that stuff till we see the fight. Yeah. You really got to ask about it. That history month that the organization got involved with now you're going to be making stops in certain cities. Whose idea was that in to implement that? It was actually Karen Bryant's idea. Karen Bryant came to us, uh, you know, about doing so. We were already doing some stuff for Black History Month, but then Karen had a lot of good ideas and uh, and uh, we liked them. So we put that whole plan together. And you have any. Uh, any plans to go any further with that? Uh, I mean, I think it's maybe three or four cities. Yeah, you're no, I think that's it. I think that's all we're doing. Okay, we can do it again next year. Yeah, if it goes well, we probably will. Speaking about depth in the in the women's division, do you have an update on Kat Zingano, what's going on with her? And I don't. Kat Zingano and I have played phone tag, and I owe her a phone call. She's still in line at this point? Yo, yeah. I mean, when she comes back, when she's healthy, She's going through a, a lot right now. You know, she's in like a Dominic Cruz situation. You know, I feel really bad for her, and uh, we'll see what happens. She's also grieving, isn't she? So yeah, probably. Uh, you know, the kitchen sink has been thrown at that poor girl, losing the opportunity of the Ultimate Fighter, losing the opportunity to fight for the title, being injured and going through all that emotional crap, and then having, her you know, her husband. You know, it's just I can't even imagine that poor girl. What's the latest on? Uh Gilbert and Charlotte situation. Do you guys still have the... Yeah, I'm... Listen, I told you guys I like I like Gilbert, and we'll see what happens. Um, it's yeah. still... You guys still have that. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, we have that. Back, back to Ronda, I'm just throwing this massively forward now. People talked about if you became too tired or became too old or too grey to be able to do what you do at the moment. <laughs> right. Um, and people said, oh, Charles Sonny might be able to step in sometimes and be the lead promoter. Right. Have you ever thought already in your mind, in the back of your mind, that... Oh, Ron would probably be quite good at what I do as well. <laughs> I, th I think there, there'd be a lot of people that are that are good at what I do. Um, uh, it's uh, she seems to understand yeah. how it works. Though. Well, you just got to be. You just got to like what you do. I, I like. I like what I do. I love what I do. Um, I love the sport. I love most of the people in it. Uh, you know, it, it's huh? Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but it's you know, when that day comes, I'm sure somebody will jump in and do just fine. Dana, the history of... Are you doing a boxing film? Uh, yeah, that's over already. That was a quick one. That was an in and out. Actually, that's not dead yet. We're still... We, 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 we uh, aired on Discovery 
and we pulled uh, less than stellar numbers on that show, like 349,000 viewers or something uh, tuned in for it, which is pretty much a disaster for Discovery. And uh, but it's still alive. It's going to end up might end up somewhere else. Why did you do that? What got you involved? Well, I, I uh, a friend of mine that I, that used to be my partner back in the day, Peter Welsh, had, you know, had this this. Uh, these competitions going on back in Boston. So Polygy and I checked it out. We liked it. We liked the stories. We liked the characters that were involved. And we thought that uh, that we would take a different approach toward a boxing reality show. We thought we would go after personalities and we th- you know, in telling stories. And we really believed, I, I was really pumped for it to be on Discovery because I felt like we'd reach more people um, and that a lot of people would be into the storytelling. I was wrong. Pete Welch, the coach. Huh? I'm from Boston, he was a coach. Yeah. So, so what? Historically in combat sports, it seems like a, a blowout fight doesn't necessarily mean that people won't buy it. You know, it's like a 7-1 to one favorite. If it's Floyd Mayweather, they'll still buy it. Right. But with Ronda specifically, if she keeps beating girls by arm bar, do you think you'll ever run into a, a situation where potential buyers are out there saying, I don't know if I want to pay money when I'm, I'm pretty certain that this girl's going to submit this other girl that I don't know in the first round? Who knows? I mean, that's like going back to the Tyson era when people were like, oh, Tyson, this is going to be a first-round knockout. Guess what? I still sat home and watched it. Exactly. You're going to have people who are fight fans, people who are fringe. You know, the fringe people jump in for the for when the big ones, you know, like like 169. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody knows uh, in, in the fringe. But the, the hardcore fight fans are going to want to watch going to want to watch fights, man. Did you mention the fans' reaction? Uh, the second uh, Misha Tate Ronda Rousey fight. Being in the arena that night, I was really struck by not only the reaction to Rousey, but the reaction to Tate even in defeat. Do you see Ronda not only as a star, but also at this point a potential star maker? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. Um, beating Ronda Rousey means something. You know, you beat Ronda Rousey, um, it's pretty big for you. Or do you, you know, be competitive? Uh, yeah, even, yeah. That, that was the thing. I mean, yeah. the big talk about that was Misha Tate made it to the third round. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Do, do, we also, do we also have any clarification, or did you get satisfactory clarification on the Julianne Pena situation? Is that still as you thought it was initially? <coughs> yeah. That you heard it from her, and that's. I heard it from her. Fact. I heard it from her three minutes after it happened. Yeah. So I would go with the story that I heard as soon as it happened. Uh, that whole, ah, that whole situation is disgusting. I just said it. Yeah, said she's gonna she's gonna do a two million dollar gate. She did a one point three million dollar gate. Her last fight that she uh, headlined. How many tickets? Uh not many, not many. Why did you move the Chael Bonnerly fight to Brazil? We didn't. We didn't move the fight. Uh, and, and, and I, I addressed this before, but okay. I didn't know that we had that up on our website. We hadn't made a decision on where it was going to go. Was it going to go here? Was it going to go in Brazil? Plus, the coaches always fight on Globo down there in Brazil. So, you know? so that was the, the key reason was just the contract. I didn't know. Global? I was either going to no, no. I was either going to do the the, the, the Vanderlei Chael fight here, or put Dos Santos Alistair Overeem down there, or Dos Santos. Uh, uh, over him here as a co I, I was still working on it. But the new show in Latin America? What's that? The new show you're, you're making in Latin America? Yep. Going? It's going good. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still working on it. We haven't started shooting yet, but it's going great. All the preliminary work is looking good. Do you have any update on uh, the Brad Pickett fight for London if he has a new opponent after Ian McCall went out? We, 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 might, we might. I don't know off the top of my head. You got one today? Yeah, we got one today. Check, check. You'll see her. You'll see her. <coughs> How's it going? It's going good. No, we're still shooting. <coughs> on the agenda is to clarify their stance on the testosterone replacement exemption. You know. Right now, hey, Belfort can come in, he can fly for one. There's nothing in the rules that say he can't. For you personally, what would you like to see, number one, the commission come out and say about exemptions? 
I've, I've been saying it forever. I, I think it should go away. It should go away. It'll make everything easy, make everything fair. Nobody will have to, you know, well, this guy gets to, it'll be gone. Then, then, then we don't have to talk about it, worry about it, hear about it, or think about it. Are you okay with Belfort not breaking the rules? He can apply for it. Of course. Uh, absolutely, it's absolutely legal. He can he can apply for it, and, and yeah. But do you personally, is that a problem for a guy who has already failed a drug test in Nevada before? Uh, that's up to, yeah. I mean, that's up to them. Uh, you know, like I said before, a lot of guys are on... Uh, are on TRT. Guys are getting exemptions and, and using it. Uh, you know, I, I just I think the Vitor thing is overplayed, and, and he's point. Yes, I know he testified, but the guy the guy's had these exemptions. He's been able to use it. He's going to apply for it, and if they say no, then he's going to have to fight without using it. See, it's as simple as that. Then, are you made aware of uh, Nate Corey's comments earlier in the week about fighter treatment? And yeah. Your thoughts? I mean, I, Ke Ke Lorenzo talked to Kevin about it the other day, and, and I think Lorenzo summed it up perfectly. You know, I like Nate Corey. I've, let me tell you what. You're never going to hear me say anything negative about any of the guys from season one of The Ultimate Fighter. I, 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 I fucking love all those guys. I respect them. I've always had a great relationship with Nate Corey. Um, you know, Lorenzo said it the best. It's unfortunate that Nate, fought, you know, fought at a time when, you know, we were still $44 million in the hole, you know? It's not like, it's not like, uh, you know, the sport has evolved so much since then. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of negative things uh, the last couple of weeks, which, you know, we, we've done a lot of positive things over the last 13 years, you know? Even when we were, if you look at what the Fertitta brothers did and the money that they put out when we were in the hole, and now it's easy to look back and go, no. Oh, they invested 44 million, and we hear this thing's worth a few billion. Yeah, easy to say that now, but back then, this thing was—I mean, you guys all saw the movie, the the, the 20 year anniversary thing. It was so close to being shut down and going away, and, and and there was a time when I was like, we're never, fucking ever getting that 44 million dollars back. It's never gonna happen, you know. I, I there was a time when I actually believed that. Well, now we're in a period where we're not $44 million in the hole, and it brings me kind of be remiss if I didn't run up to over the lenders. Yep. I wanted to think the money's there. He's a top contender, uh, had arguably one of the greatest fights in UFC history. He obviously did the belt for the match. Can you give us an update or thoughts on the situation? No. <laughs> Here's the thing that's funny about that is, is, you know, it's one or the other. We're a monopoly. Guys can't make more money. Guys can't do this. Now the guy's out there. He's at free trade. He's out there testing the water, seeing what he's worth. And now it's like some big fucking issue. He's the number one thing. You're not going to sign. He's out there testing the fucking waters, man. This is how this shit works. Is it a bad thing? I thought this is what everybody wanted. There's no money. UFC has all the money, and these guys can't do this. This guy's out there testing the water. And now, now this is a big fucking negative issue? I don't get it. What do you feel like... Uh, would you support the Ali Act being uh, amended to include MMA and having to have disclosures to the fighters so they know where their revenue is coming from? What do you mean disclosure? Uh, well, as far know, as on, what? On boxing, when a fighter these guys, fighting. these guys have audit rights to come in and they can they can audit their 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 their, their well, fight. I'm not talking about pay per view, but I'm talking about. But those are the guys you're talking about. The guys that you're talking about that that, that make the big money are the guys that that are the draw. The guys that. The rest of the, in this in boxing, they don't have this fucking problem because the guys that are on the lower end of the card, the guys who make all the money are the top guys. This money spread out throughout everybody. Right, but I, I guess what, whoever it is, any boxer, if I feel like I should. You be guys, you can't apply it. It's, it's two completely different sports, two totally different things. This is a league, and the money is spread out between all the guys. Yes, the guy who is the um, who is the, the is the star, the headliner of that card, them and the co-main event, however it goes, or sometimes three. Sometimes we have three guys when, when, when we have fights like that. Those guys are getting the bulk of the money. And the guys that have those have audit rights to come in and, and go through their numbers. They, have all, they can come right in and audit. And the rest of the guys... How common is that? What? That they audit. Nobody's ever audited. As far as I know, nobody's ever audited. You know? But they have the rights in their contract. Anybody can come in and audit. Everything we do is above... Remember this. The Fertitta brothers... Have the, have the most privileged license in the state of Nevada. They have a gaming license, okay? 
it is fucking a nightmare to get a gaming license. And and, and you have to, uh, when I say you have to be, a, 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 you know, you have to do everything above board when, when you're when you hold a gaming license. No 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 money is being held from fighters. No no anybody can come in that has audit rights and audit the thing. It's just it's a completely different it's different than boxing. There's been a tiny little smidge of chatter on Twitter between Matt Sarah and Matt Hughes. One of them said, "Hey, if Daniel put that fight together, we do that fight again." Did you ever put that fight together? No. No. Listen, I get it. They don't like it. It's not even a sideshow. Um, it's not a sideshow. Both both great competitors, great champions. Matt Hughes is the guy who helped us, you know, who helped us build this thing, um, as as did Sarah. Sarah was always a great guy to us. Um, this doesn't need to happen. At least, no, you wouldn't have to do it at welterweight. You'd probably do it up. Yeah, yeah. Classes. What are they going to fight? It's super heavyweight? Right <laughs> I, I, think, I think Sarah is out of his weight class now. <laughs> Back to the Gilbert thing just briefly. Can you say how long you have to match? I, I, I don't know. I'm not involved in that at all. I, I made that very clear a couple weeks ago. I'm, I'm not involved. What was your reaction to uh, Bjorn's comment that we're going to sign everybody, we're going after everybody? <laughs> Guys are trying to fucking get out of that place. Guys are, they got these contracts that you can't get out of. Look what they did to Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez <coughs> has fought once in like two years. You know what I mean? was promised all kinds of things that he never had. The difference is, everybody's throwing a fit about this, we don't sue our fighters. We don't fucking, if a guy wants to try to do something and move on and do something with his career or test the waters, we don't sue him. We don't jump in and start suing our fighters. You know, people are trying to jump that ship, not jump onto that ship. He's, uh, that dude's out of his fucking mind. Who Gilbert is? Huh? Oh, yeah. Just clarifying. Nah, no. Gilbert's out there testing the market. Good for him. I don't have any hard feelings toward Gilbert Melendez. Not a big fan of, you know, the guys I was dealing with. But this happens sometimes. So you know what happens? I don't deal with it. Dana, if, if you, like you said, you, you can't really blame Gilbert for doing what he's doing. He's going out, he's trying to make money on his career. Would it, would, it, would it change, I guess, your perception of him? Like, let's say he goes and he wins, you know, six fights, loses two. He'd be obviously older, but you'd still look at him as like a, a, a fairly decent talent. You know, would it change your opinion on him at all of, of trying to bring him back at some point? If he if he fucking signs a deal with those guys, he ain't going anywhere. Nobody can get out of those fucking deals they have. And Viacom will sue you till you fucking bleed. Sue you till you bleed. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother ball game over there. Everybody wants to talk about the UFC like we're bullies and whatever. They're the fucking bullies. And they, they got these contracts that you cannot get out of. Look uh, look at Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. Look at Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, but yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking bad. Bad. I agree. But you've signed some of their former fighters, though. Guys that they didn't really put up as much of a fight to keep, yeah. of course, like Hector. Yeah. But but I guess my well, question would be... I don't think they didn't put up much of a fight. They didn't fucking much. see it coming. They didn't uh, see it coming and they weren't ready. You know what I mean? And now they they just because ever who doesn't want to jump that ship? You think Chandler really wants to be there? Chandler's sitting there going, "I just signed that fucking deal." Oh my God, why did I sign that deal? Nobody wants to be there. They're they're in these contracts that are dirty, nasty contracts that you can never get out of. And what are you going to do? You're going to go head to head legally with Viacom and sue them? Good luck with that one. See how that works out for you. You spend the rest of your career in court. Eddie Alvarez has fought one time in the last two years. Yeah. What's the difference between uh, Rhonda doing movies and Rampage doing it? Is because she's keeping you guys in the loop all the way, all the way yeah, along. That's how you do it. Rampage jumped out of the, to do the movie instead of yeah. fighting the Ultimate Fighter. Fight, <coughs> you know, uh, that was completely different. I mean, you've said a million times like Rampage gave away a whole bunch of money that he would have made here and made basically nothing to to do the AT movie. Do you get any sense of that with with Rhonda? Or? Rhonda's making a lot of money. That's the other thing, too. I've never seen, you know, I've seen a lot of these guys, you know, um, there's no doubt. The, the, the Rampage thing, to do the A-Team, number one, it was a huge opportunity. That was a big movie, like a big budget movie. And, and, and I thought it was a great movie. And I thought Rampage did a great job in that movie. Um, but it didn't really pan out. He didn't, you know, Rhonda's, Rhonda's getting paid. I've never seen somebody go straight from here and go into the movies and make the kind of money she's making. 
I, I didn't even think that was possible. But she is, so good for her. They talk about what her role is going to be, or are you not allowed to disclose that? Her role in what? In the entourage movie. Yeah, I probably shouldn't talk about it. I, it's not my deal, I, you know. But uh, I'm excited for her. It's a cool movie, and it's good stuff. Chuck going to be in it? Chuck? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, no. Like he really recently mentioned the uniform policy that you guys are working on. And there's been a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of interest in it. Um, some people are wondering, you know, how it's going to affect the fighters. I don't know if you saw like Felice Herring came out recently and she had some things to say. She, she markets herself very well. So she said that she probably might be losing money if such a thing happened, whereas maybe it might help some other fighters. Felice Herring is losing money. Well, apparently she has some pretty some pretty good sponsors. Um, First of all, we did. have no uniform deal. We haven't announced a uniform deal. We have no uniform deal. We, we said something that we're, that we're looking into. We're, 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 you know... They're just, there's no fucking uniform deal. We're working. Somebody asked me a question about it one day, and I said something about it, and everybody, if you fucking guys didn't have something to bitch about, <laughs> listen, I'll say question. something today that I'll get, it'll give you, you guys can bitch about that for another fucking 10 weeks till I sit down with you again. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We announced no uniform deal. There is no deal. Um, we, we have nothing, but people are bitching about it. I'm going to lose fucking money. But then we got guys sitting there going, I refuse to wear any sponsors because I, I can't get any. I've been blah, blah, blah. Well, Shut kind of the my, fuck up, everybody. Kind of when we get a deal done and I come out and announce it and lay out the rules and tell you how it goes and things like that, if that day ever comes or if it ever happens, then we can talk, then we can bitch about and argue about things and talk about money lost, money made, money this. It's fucking ridiculous. There is no deal. There is no deal. And, 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 and we're sitting here talking about something that doesn't even exist. And people are bitching about something that doesn't exist. You, you know, it's like a fucking hair salon, man. To be fair, though, I asked well, you about the Fight question. Pass thing last week, right? Anything, and God. guys are clearly losing sponsorship on Fight Pass, and you shrug. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like if they're losing money and they can't replace it, they're fighting for less money than they were before because of Fight Pass. Why would that? But so what? So we shouldn't do Fight Pass? So should we never no. fucking try new things no, no, and no. open? It's just, it's ridiculous. No, it's all stupid. I'm, all I'm saying is... So what do you want me to do? Since we have Fight Pass, people don't want to fucking sp sponsor them. They don't want to pay. No, I think... What should I... No, tell me what I should do. Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay. Just ha have a conversation with the, the managers and with the fighters and find out what the issues are and try to find a way that the fighters can not be, you know, taken advantage... Not only be taken advantage of, but lose income. If you're making, you know, $5,000 today... And then you fight a fight on Fight Pass and sponsorship money, and you make zero. That's that's. What if a fucking sponsor just doesn't want to sponsor a guy anymore and pulls out? What, what should if, I do? What if they do, but they say they can't judge on Fight Pass? You know what? You know what impact it's going to have for their business? Yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. But you that's see what I'm saying, right? It, no, it's not my fucking problem. But it's a problem, right? For the fight. No, it's not a problem. It, yeah, that's a problem for everybody. Getting sponsorship is a fucking problem. It's tough. It's hard to do. That question is ridiculous. It, Kevin, that's ridiculous. If a guy fights on Fight Pass, right? First of all, he's getting paid to fight. That's what he's getting paid for. That's what he does. He gets paid to fight. How sponsorship works out for a guy is it, it, not my problem. That is not my problem. It, 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 he's, he's a fighter. He's getting paid to fight. Period. End of story. Whatever extra money he makes outside the UFC with sponsors and all that shit... That's his fucking deal. Well, I mean, do you think? Do you think that fucking Shaq or Kobe or anybody else is bitching at the NBA because, you know, if, if they got to go play a fucking game in, in, in another country, a, you know, fast acting, ten acting doesn't want to pay them while they're well, out there. Wait a minute. Who gives a well, shit? Well, there, there's an example. Robert Griffin the third has a has a sponsorship with is it Reebok or Adidas? Who is it? It's one of those two. And the NFL uniforms are Nike, so he would in the warm ups wear his Adidas or Reebok, whatever the hell it is, outfit. And the NFL fined him ten grand, made him cover it up, and put it up. He's losing right. money, so he's trying to make. You know, right. So it, it happens. The guys are fighting it. I mean, yeah. so it's not like the, it hasn't the, happened. But, the, but there, there are, you know, uh, there's never going to be a situation where we're not going to expand the business and go and do all these other things because it'll affect sponsorship. No, I wasn't saying don't do it. I was just saying, you know, kind of work collaboratively with them to try to try to find a solution. I guess all I was saying. Yeah, like I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find a solution because people don't want to sponsor them if they're fighting on Fight Pass and these fights that would never even exist and are actually being funded by Fight Pass. That makes no sense. Yeah, a question about the uniform that does not exist. Right. I think some people would be curious that if you do sign a deal, 
would you consider, you know, like like raising the bottom line of what fighters are paid entry level fighters because they can't make sponsorships? Obviously, as much sponsorship if, if if a deal like this ever did exist, we're, we would figure it out to where it would help. You know, exactly, exactly. Being that this is the first fight card in Nevada without Keith Kaiser at the helm of the NSAC, what have you found the response to be like from the commission? Has it been better or worse? No, it's, it, it's all the same. I mean, everything. I, I haven't talked to anybody from the commission leading up to this fight. Have you heard that Ron Futrellis is one of the favorites to get the job? No, I did not hear that. Interesting. Greg Serb and uh, Ron Futrellis. Probably I like Greg Serb, too. Probably something you talked about before now in the last week, but there have been a lot of decisions on the last two cards. It's been a, a record number between 169 and then the fight night in Brazil. Did you have any opinion on why that is? Was it just coincidence? A lot of people are offering theories as to why there's been so many fights go the distance. I, 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 no, I don't give a shit what the theories are. It's, it's That's crazy. I mean, I, I uh, if you didn't like the Machida fight, you're not a fight fan. I love the Machida fight. Um, and I like the, uh, the Jacare fight, too. I think Carmont, uh, Carmont looked tough in that fight. Uh, you remember what I told you guys back at the thing? Carmont won't be able to, you know, lay on him in that fight, and it's, it's going to be scrambles and and, and, and some stand up and um, yeah. I mean, those two fights were great. I think most people were, if people were complaining, these might be the, the dumb internet people that you refer to. But they said that you know the prelims mostly is it like is because there's a declining level of talent because they're spread thin that there's not as many finishes. Was it because theory. of the bonuses that, that you guys theory. changed? Yeah. Cool. Do you, think, do you think if you gave every fight, there's a fight finish for every fight, like you finish this fight, 10,000 to you, whatever, based on your pay skill or whatever, would you ever do like a fight finish? Guys, there's going to be fights, there's going to be fucking unbelievable knockdown, drag them out fights, and there's going to be fights that go to decisions. Just Period. Just that's, the way, that's the way the fucking fight game works. Yeah. Hey, and then, uh, Eric Silva fight, that heel kick that he did was yeah. like a cool kick. I've been calling people trying to find it. Is that legal? Because it's got to be illegal. It's got, he was down. Yeah. I, it, we were talking about that because I didn't remember after seeing it because I was like, holy shit. You know, when he was doing it, I was, uh, you know, it was impressive. But uh, we were talking about it. I was like, was he down? Because he was going for a single. Right. And uh, I can't remember if he had a knee down when he was getting hit with those. He must have, though, right? At least after he the what? Was he still standing? No. The, first one. the first one he had a knee down? Yeah, then he kind of popped up and he got hit two more. Yeah. Close, yeah. Probably was, but it probably freaked the ref out too. You probably know because it freaked me out when I saw it. So yeah, it it probably was illegal. If he kicked him in the face when a knee was down, it was an illegal kick. Impressive though. What? You done with me? Oh, Is Leota the next contender? Um, yeah. I mean, we we gotta the Vitor. Uh, Weidman fight has to happen, and th depending on what Machida wants to do, does he want to wait? Does he want to, we'll see what happens. That would be awesome, too. I mean, we have a lot of options. I don't know. We'll see how this thing plays out. Did you find out what happened to Jacare? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Shoulder, shoulder. I don't know. John Ray? No, I'll see it on you. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. We good? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Echo this way. Hi, Adam. So, so. <laughs>